In this video, we're going to build some post-apocalyptic scatter train for tabletop wargaming. Fill a table with great looking and playable scenery. Welcome to Narb Makes. Let's dive into it. I wanted to showcase how you can easily build some amazing looking ruined city terrain to cover any 40k or Gaslands boards. We're going to be building a set of three ruined buildings with various levels of detail, as well as some barriers to go along with them. Let's start with the buildings. I'm using some templates shared by Miscast a while back, but you can design your own or use any templates that are about 28 millimeter scale. The actual details don't matter as much here since we're going to be breaking most of them apart and destroying them. Here I'm just gluing all of the templates to a board and cutting out all of the details. Make sure you use a sharp blade for this to get your foam core edges really smooth. I actually made some of the building sides from both cardboard and foam core just to see how they would look in the end. They each have advantages and disadvantages. For the bases of the buildings I used some thin MDF. You can salvage this from old closets and uh, some furniture has it as a backing piece. Just scavenge around or you can just buy a sheet from the hardware store. It's not that expensive. You can cut the MDF with a jigsaw or a regular hacksaw if you don't have power tools and then just bevel the edges with a knife. After you get some walls, glue them all together and add in some floors. I chose some interesting shapes to cut out to make the building ruined. I like these large cardboard blocks. They came with uh, some lights I purchased. They were on the corners, so I decided to keep them and use them for purposes like this. If you're not that comfortable with a glue gun, you can use PVA glue here. Uh, but I just like to build these things fast and uh, I don't mind getting a little, a little bit messy with the glue gun. With PPA glue you have to you have to wait quite a quite a while before things set so uh, cuts into the build time quite a bit. This piece on the right here was actually the top floor of the, the piece in front but uh, felt like a shame having cut out the windows so I decided to use it on the right side. I glue a bit of the, uh, the larger cardboard at the bottom just to give it some rigidity and then I glue both to the base and this kind of finishes off my, my large pieces. I do a quick pass over all the top edges to bevel them. This sells the effect of a ruined building more than straight cut lines would. With a generous helping of hot glue we stick it all to the bottom. One of the disadvantages of foam core in this state is that it is quite flimsy, so you can see it bending and warping as I'm manipulating this piece. With cardboard that wouldn't be as prevalent, but uh, I'll show you a way to reinforce um, to kind of add some rigidity to it. The one advantage to foam core is that it is very easy to texture, so you can just take a aluminum foil ball and just texture all of it to look uh, quite nicely. I didn't really know where I was going with this very top floor, and at the end I just ended up kind of scrapping it. Some thicker cardstock, or chipboard as it's called, can help add some weight to the walls. Add these to the corners and stack them up. They add some interesting details when uh, where a building would stick out. Now we're going to move on to step two, sculpting and terrain shaping. To get the rubble effect, I make some rough shapes with bits of foam core board, cardboard, and aluminum foil. I'll be going over all this with joint compound to act as a filler and smooth out the transitions. Now. When making ruined buildings like this, there's always two major design trade-offs to consider. Playability and realism. For the most realistic piece, the main floor will just be rubble sloping away from the middle where the building has collapsed. But this ends up removing a lot of play area from the piece, as most of it's going to be under rubble. A good mix on this range is what gets the best results. It looks great, but still offers some playability. When I made this, I made it in a set of three buildings. And another two pieces, which this is one of them, uh, are mostly collapsed so the first floor slopes down with rubble to kind of make it look very realistic, like the building actually collapsed in on itself. Here I've got an offcut from uh, drop ceiling tiles I installed a couple weeks earlier. I'm cutting these in widths that are roughly the size of my walls, and I'm just cutting through them to make lots of little blocks. It sort of feels like uh, cooking, cutting up veggies. 
grab some of the extra form core and I do the same thing with it. I rip it up, toss it in the bin. Also added some paint, PVA glue. Finally, we'll be adding joint compound, which will act as a sort of filler paste or sculpt a mold. Don't worry about why it's pink. That's just an indication for when you know it's dry. It's kind of a gimmick. It's gonna dry white once it's fully cured, but we're adding paint, so it doesn't matter. This part is super messy, so I really advise wearing gloves. Here, we're just trying to fill in all of the cracks where we want it to look like the building has collapsed. And there's just mounds and mounds of broken concrete, dirt, and all this other stuff just falling apart. Giving everything a nice gradual slope outwards just really sells the effect. You can make some coming out of windows and, and doorways, and it just looks really, really natural if you do this. One thing to keep in mind though is that playability aspect. Leave some flat areas on your train so you can actually rest miniatures and, and models on them. This is going to take some time to dry, so leave it a day, leave it a night, come back to it in the morning. Now this is when we're adding all of our texture. And I put this texture into three categories. Large pieces of the construction material we've used so far, um, large aggregate sand and pebbles, and then fine particle sand. Apply all of these with watered down PVA glue by first painting a mixture, um, and applying the large pieces. After the large pieces, you scatter some of the large aggregate. So this is like your, your larger stones and pebbles. Uh, and then you follow it by blending it all in with fine particle sand. Tile grout also works well at the end, but be aware it makes a lot of dust. I used some of the actual joint compound from the earlier step on the walls here, as you can see. And I've added some greeble, some old junk bits that I found, an old fan, uh, an old 3D printer nozzle, that sort of stuff. Really adds those, uh, those details to the walls. Now, once this has had some time to dry, we're going to have to seal all of this gravel and sand in. You're going to want to spray down some PVA glue or Add some Mod Podge. This will make sure that all of the detail we added will stay on the board instead of flaking off when you uh, touch it with your fingers. Spray paint with various shades to get a free shading effect. I use a brown for the ground, uh, black for the walls from underneath, and a gray coming from above. When painting this uh, afterwards, it helps sell the realism by giving an easy base coat. I am not an expert painter, so I just end up painting things until I like the way they look. I start by adding dark colors, overbrushing them into the details, then work my way up the lightness until I get the top or uh, most raised surfaces. Uh, I tend to make it brighter than I want so that the next step works a bit better. And that's adding a black or brown wash to the whole piece. It really sinks into all the crevices and makes the details pop. This can be made with some sort of mixture of black and brown inks, paints, lots of water and some flow aid. Um, one drop of dish soap works really well here and really you want to just apply this liberally. It ends up darkening the whole piece. After this step, I'm usually pretty happy with the results, so I leave it as is. Um, if I don't like it, I'll touch it up again with uh, some more dry brushing and go in with washes on the darker areas. As a bonus, let's add in some concrete barriers to add around the ruins and sell the whole effect. This is a really easy build compared to the previous piece, and I think I finished the four of these off in less than an hour. I added these metal washers to the bottom of the, the bases, uh, just to kind of make them always try and land on the bottom when you throw them on. From here, just some simple shapes made out of uh, foam core board. Uh, kind of make a wedge shape and cut out two sides. Uh, and then I come in with some joint compound again, and uh, texture it a bit with uh, some aluminum foil. Toothpicks are really great for showing up as rebar. Just plunge those in with some PVA glue and they'll set perfectly. I thought they looked a bit plain, so I added uh, some chipboard to make the middle part a bit raised. Um, you can experiment, try different designs. Um, just to keep it pretty simple. More joint compound, make all the edges look a bit weathered, add some texture. Uh, just go crazy with this stuff. Some black magic sauce to seal these in, and then we paint them in a similar style as the buildings. 
As always, guys, if you enjoyed this build, please like and subscribe. It really helps the channel out. I'll be building more scatter terrain for Warhammer 40k with a new video every week. Enjoy some awesome B-roll.